Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the August 10th, 2023 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks everyone for coming. Lori, would you please call the roll? Sure. Hetsky? Hetsky here. Aiken? Aiken here. Burton? Burton here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings? Tidings here. Sangster? Sangster here. Weissar? Weissar here. O'Connor? O'Connor here. Prinzing? Prinzing here. Gray here. All right, we have minutes from uh, the July 13th meeting. Hopefully everyone's had an opportunity to review them. And may I entertain a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Fighting second. Oop. Sorry. Kelly's got you there, Terry. Okay. <laughs> Kelly. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. So, uh, for those of you here with us in the audience and uh, watching around the planet, um, we will cover for, typically from 6.30 to 7 is our work session. 7 o'clock begins our public hearing portion of the meeting. If we get through our tabled applications, we'll go into the public hearing immediately following the uh, work session business. And I need to let everyone know that items 3 and 4 on our agenda, 1345 uh, Shoecraft Road, the applicant has asked that uh, they postpone their appearance uh, at the planning board. Um, they need to additional time to gather some additional information. So when they do uh, resubmit or ask to be put on the agenda, we'll give ample notice, the same type of advance notice and public um, legal notice as we have in the past. So there will be we send out postcards. Ample, uh, put a sign on the notification board. for when they come in. Not sure when they will come back in, but um, just in case there are some people here for items three and four, uh, 1345 Shoecraft Road, that those two applications will not be heard tonight. Okay, Doug. Uh, Let's go through the tabled items. All right, tabled application number one, 1676 Penfield Road, the Flower City Arcade. Uh, the applicant is continuing to work with the Zoning Board of Appeals on their various uh, variances requested. Um, I know they're still working with the neighbor to secure a parking agreement. He has submitted at least a draft um, a parking agreement to secure some additional uh, parking spaces from the neighbor. Um, they have not submitted revised plans. Uh, they said their engineer is a little behind. Um, so they're hoping to have plans in for our September meeting. Okay. So I guess we table. continue to table. Tidings continue table. I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right, tabled application number two, 2130 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, Chick-fil-A. Um, they will be appearing before the zoning board next week for a parking variance as well. Um, they have requested to be tabled uh, until after the zoning board uh, hears their variance, because um, that will uh, dictate what kind of revisions that they will do to their plans. Um, and they'll plan to resubmit those after the zoning board meeting uh, in time for the planning board September meeting. They have request to be tabled. Move to continue tabling. I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. And for the record, Lori, I will not be here on the 14th. <coughs> All right. <coughs> and okay. then we have uh, one action item, um, 2755 Penfield Road was a subdivision that was approved back in August of 2022. Um, the applicant is still working on securing a cross access uh, easement for the property and working with their neighbors, it's on a private drive, um, to work with the HOA. So they're requesting a one year extension of their approval. Okay, staff have any issues with that 
Anybody on the board have any issues? No. no. Somebody want to move to extend? Uh, I'll move um, 180 days. Move, yeah, start with that. Okay, I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Um, wait a minute, they're asking for a one-year extension, 365 days, you want to do that instead? Sure, absolutely, yeah, let's, let's change that uh, motion to okay. one, one year. One year. Yeah. Second. Second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. <clears throat> all the table the miscellaneous items I had for you guys tonight okay so we'll move right into the public hearing portion of the evening the way the process works the applicant for the item being heard uh, will come up to this table here set up your computer whatever information that you want to share with the board and the public mm -hmm and uh, go ahead and present the project idea to us. The board will ask questions after that, and then once, uh, once we go through that, we will open up for uh, audience participation. And if you are here in the building, uh, there probably are slips of paper uh, in that blue, little bin on the table by the door. Feel free to fill one of those out. If you don't want to do that, just raise your hand and I'll call on you as I see you. If you're not here, you can still participate by calling in at 585-340-8771. They will put you in the queue downstairs and let us know um, um, that you're waiting. Alternatively, you can go on the Penfield website. That's www.penfield.org. There should be a link on the home page to this meeting, and you can submit your comments electronically. Uh, if you're here and want to speak, come on up and sit next to Doug and address your comments to the, to the board. And I'll probably repeat that once we get to that part of the evening. Okay. So first applicant, if you want to come on up here uh, to the table next to Mike and Doug, would you like to read the first application? Yes. Um, so it's a K-9. Yes. Um, just as an update to the legal notice, uh, Lou Engineers, not Marathon Engineering, is the engineer is the uh, applicant's agent. Okay. Um, so just a note to change on that. Um, Lou Engineering, on behalf of K-9 Resorts Luxury Pet Hotel, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 and Article 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan and conditional use permit approval for the proposed redevelopment of an existing building and parking area into a luxury pet hotel with associated site improvements on 2.1 acres <coughs> located at 2222 Penfield Road. One, New York 14526, the property is now or formerly owned by 2226 Penfield Road, LLC, and zoned limited business, LB. Application number 23P-0009, SBL 140.01-1-7.2. Do we have some technical challenges? Uh, now we have the presentation up. Oh. I can use this one, it's on the screen. Okay, all right. <clears throat> We do strive to be ready. Is there anything different than the presentation that was sent to us? No, we can go with this one. It's fine. I had a shorter deck, so we can go through all of this if you want. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll just ask you to advance. Okay, perfect. Um, good evening. I'm Kevin Ten, Vice President of Franchise Operations with Canine Resorts Luxury Pet Hotel. Um, we are a, a luxury uh, resort for dogs. Um, we do overnight boarding and doggy daycare. 
Um, I'd love to introduce Mike Maida, who's our franchise owner here up in the Rochester area. Um, Mike, you joined us about six months ago, I'd yep. say, signed with the franchise. 2022. Yep, absolutely, and we're thrilled to have him as part of the team. Um, you can advance to the next slide. Um, we're going to go through the history of the brand, give you a little bit of what we do, um, what sets us apart from our competitors uh, in the same market, um, and then happy to answer any questions for you if that's okay. Sure. Um, so the history of the brand, we were started with two brothers, Stephen and Jason Parker, about 18 years ago in Fenwood, New Jersey. Um, our brand started as a dog walking business. Uh, they uh, had this idea to show their parents they were responsible enough to own dogs. Uh, their parents did not allow them to have a dog, so they started a dog walking business because they love you know, being in the pet care industry. Um, and turned their, their dog walking business, very lucrative dog walking business, into the brand that we are today, which is a nationwide franchise um, uh, lo uh, across the country. So about 20 years of pet care experience. Um, the first resort in Fanwood, New Jersey is our flagship that opened in 2005. We currently have 25 locations open nationally. We are opening number 26 this Saturday in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Um, and that number of 135 has now jumped to 146 locations sold across the country. So we have a, about 121 locations in various um, areas of development um, currently in advance. Um, so our purpose is to provide a home away from home for dogs where dogs will love to play, uh, stay and play and customers will know that their dogs are cared for in a five star level. Um, and what that means is we don't like to do things that dogs don't like. So we don't cut their hair, we don't trim their nails, we don't offer injections, um, we don't do grooming of any type. It's really just a luxurious place for your dogs to stay uh, and enjoy a day of daycare. Um, we also do not do any retail. Everything is service-based um, within our, our brand, so we don't sell dog <coughs> food or leashes or anything like that. <clears throat> so our services, we specialize in um, cage-free boarding, overnight boarding. You can flip to the next one. Um, our luxury boarding, we have three, le three levels of accommodations. What you're seeing on the screen there is our luxury boarding accommodation. It's an eight by eight soundproofed room with all the accommodations of home, including a flat screen TV. Um, those are uh, limited. We have six of those rooms in, in each of our resort buildings. Um, they hold multiple family dogs. Uh, again, it's our top of the line boarding uh, accommodation, cage free. The dogs have uh, lots of room to, to roam around. They have um, Coranda bedding, uh, luxury Coranda bedding, or for an additional charge, we do provide a memory foam uh, couch looking bed um, for the dogs to reside in, uh, excuse me, overnight. Um, we have our middle, uh, middle of the run, uh, and I'll show a picture in the next slide, is called an executive room. Those are five by, uh, five by seven enclosures, again, cage free. Um, so a dog has plenty of space to, to walk around. Um, and then traditional compartment boarding, which you see our little friend, the pug, up on the top there. Those are for dogs that feel more comfortable in a closer environment, maybe uh, being crate trained at home, or um, their puppies that need a more confined space. So you can see an example of what the luxury suite hallway looks like. That's what you see when you walk into our lobbies of Canine Resorts. Um, it's really our wow factor when you walk in. Um, very upscale, very um, well-appointed building. Does not look like your traditional kennel um, of days ago. Um, doggy daycare is our other facet of our business, and this is you know really important to the brand to, and this is one of the reasons why we're here, mm -hmm. is for an outdoor area for dogs to be in the fresh air and stretch their legs. Um, so the benefits of doggy daycare, dogs tend to be lonely, they're pack animals, um, they socialize from other dogs, um, they love to make friends. I've seen it with my own dogs when I bring them to uh, the Fanwood location. They all have their cliques of their friends that they go and you know have fun with during the day. Um, better than the alternatives, having strangers come to your house, maybe spend just a few minutes um, with your dog and then they're locked up in the house again. Um, they get a change of scenery, they get a little uh, change of venue, they get to go to a beautiful resort, play outside on play equipment, um, and see their friends. Uh, it's also important for dogs to expel their energy, and it helps them stay in shape. 
Uh, one important note, so our boarding, uh, our boarding accommodations are all inclusive. So that means if you are boarding your dog overnight, they're automatically included in doggy daycare for the same price. There's no upcharge or anything like that. Um, we do have different versions of daycare. You can switch to the next. Um, two different groups of our daycares. Um, our small group daycare is for dogs that are 30 pounds and under. Our large dog is for 30 pounds and over. And for every dog that comes to a canine resort location, they are evaluated. And what we do is a full day of daycare where our, our trained staff observes the dog's um, interactions with other dogs, seeing if there's any signs of aggression, any signs of stress. Um, a dog, and we've learned this over, you know, coming out of the pandem pandemic, a lot of folks adopted dogs that have never seen another dog, they've never interacted with another dog. And that was a big shift for our brand because we had a lot of situations where, you know, they weren't used to being in a group environment and we had to adjust some of our operations. Um, so every dog goes through the evaluation process. If they're selected or if they're approved for group play, then they're in a room like this, as you can see, off leash in a room fully supervised with our, our pet care technicians um, and an adjacent outdoor yard is on the opposite side of this room, for example. Um, if a dog is not approved for daycare, then they would, be, um, they would be considered a private play dog where they would have four interactions, four 10 to 15 minute play times with our staff in a private yard away from other, other um, dogs. Um, so we do have options for dogs that are not approved for daycare. And flip to the next. This is an example of our personal playtime yard. So this is a third yard on the outside of the building, separate from the small and large daycare um, outdoor yards. Those great um, pens that you see with the with the chain link there, those are just elimination pens that we use um, in the morning and at nighttime when we're bringing the dogs out. They let we let them eliminate while we're cleaning and. Um, feeding them on the inside. And then that grassy area is the playtime area where we'll throw a ball, have fe play fetch, uh, tug of war, you name it. What, what do you mean by eliminate? Uh, use the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so bathing, I mentioned Duly we noted. do not do any grooming, but we do <laughs> offer bathing. Um, and that's really, we want to make sure that our residents, our, our guests are going home smelling better when they came in. Dogs are very active when they play. They play with their mouths, they roll on the ground. So at the end of every boarding stay, we do have uh, a requirement that a bath is involved. Um, again, we have a bathing room in the resort. We do everything right there, but we don't clip any nails, things like that. Baths are only provided to existing daycare and boarding clients. It is not something that a customer of canine uh, or a non-customer of canine could just walk in off the street and have their dog bathed there. So materials and design, this is you know, really what sets us apart from our, uh, from our competitors. So we take <clears throat> very uh, particular attention to the air quality of our resorts. Um, we want to avoid the spread of smell, odor, um, any canine cough that is prevalent, especially this time of year that occurs in a, in a kennel uh, environment. So our uh, design is a multi-zone uh, throughout the building. So we have five zones of HVAC where you have uh, the air of one room does not bleed over into the air of another room. So in, this, in any of our canine locations, we basically re-engineer the entire uh, air conditioning units of the building um, and put in a specialized system, which is hospital grade, to avoid all of those issues um, of any sort of pathogens passing throughout the building. We do also uh, have an ERV system that does uh, 15 fresh air exchanges per hour. So we're constantly bringing fresh air from the outside, pumping the inside air outside, and it's being treated by our UV air systems by Aeropy. These are UV light uh, technology that is mounted to the ceiling in every room that a dog either plays or resides in. We also have it built into the ductwork of our HVAC equipment as a secondary line of defense to kill any uh, airborne pathogens. That could spread odor or um, disease throughout the building. All of our materials are also non-porous, so we use epoxy floors in all the areas where the dogs will reside and play. And we have non-porous porcelain tile throughout the building where customers will be walking through for a tour in the lobby, things like that. 
that's very important also because then bacteria doesn't build up, um, again, uh, causing odors, things like that. Non-porous tile, we mitigate all of those issues. Uh, in addition, we also use an epoxy grout uh, that repels any, any of those um, uh, bacteria as well. Here's an example of our daycare and the epoxy flooring that, that is uh, put into all of those daycare rooms. So our outdoor area, so this is um, one of our newest locations. I believe this is in New York. Um, I'll talk about the fence first. So our fencing is eight feet tall. Um, the fence is a rotationally molded vinyl fence. It's a solid piece of material, uh, not vinyl slats or anything like that. Now this uh, fencing is also used for highway barriers to keep sound from bleeding from the highway into residential areas. It absorbs 98% of direct uh, uh, sound that uh, hits it. It absorbs that, that's those sound waves. The turf is a specialized turf material called canine grass by Forever Lawn. So imagine it's a uh, artificial turf like a soccer field or a football field without the rubber pellet infill. And that is for natural draining of rainfall, urine, you name it. The turf is um, specialized for um, working like your backyard does. Your dog goes in the backyard, urinates, it seeps into the ground below. Um, that cut sheet that you can see there is a cross section of what our outdoor areas look like. So in uh, an area, we'll say it's a, a parking lot that will take up the asphalt, expose the dirt. We usually put three to four inches of crushed aggregate below that, and then the turf lays on top of that. So it naturally drains like your backyard does. Um, the turf material also has antibacterial qualities in it, so it um, helps the defense of any odor, smells, things like that. Um, I'll get into cleaning a little bit, but this is also a very high, um, has a high tolerance for the, the uh, cleaning materials that we use um, in our protocols. There's a better example of, of what our uh, canine grass material looks like. Okay, you can go to the next. We talked about the fence, so we can go on there. Um, also, on the interior of the building, uh, again, we use um, acoustic ceiling tiles that absorb sound waves. Uh, so if we were in an inline retail shop, we don't have any sound waves bleeding up over the, over the roof deck into other areas of the building. Um, our building design, when we're uh, building the rooms, they go, the room walls go all the way up to the roof deck to avoid any sound from bleeding up over the ceiling tiles as well. We outfit the resort with acoustic wall art. So these are sound panels that look like a recording studio, you know, that egg uh, shell stuff that looks like in a recording studio. We just make it look pretty with pictures of puppies running in fields um, throughout the building. Um, and then our strategic layout. So if you look on the, on the plan on the side there, that's a, a, a prototype model of a canine resort. The lobby is to the front where the parking lot is. The daycares are towards the back away from any public access, things like that. Um, and then adjacent to the play rooms that are inside the building is the play yard behind that. Um, for the majority of the day, for most of the day, the dogs are inside the building. Um, a few times during the day, they will be out in the yard running around, urinating, um, things like that. But then we bring them back into the building and they'll be inside in the climate controlled uh, environment. And you can go to the next. So our operations, you can go to the next slide. So we have a very strict training program. Um, we have a learning management system that all of our locations are required to go through certain uh, certifications as well from levels of management. Um, resort owners as well must do um, certain certifications uh, in order to open their resort. Um, some of the examples are there's a, a, an organization called the Professional Pet Boarding Organization. There's two certifications we require franchise owners and management to go through that course. Um, all of our members on staff are <coughs> pet CPR certified. They are trained on um, uh, disease, how to mitigate disease, so on and so forth, which goes into our cleaning protocols. Here's an example of our training levels. You can go to the next. Um, we have uh, a very um, in-depth re reservation system called Ginger that holds all of the customer information, vaccination dates, um, you name it, feeding, history, all of those things, it's all available on our reservation system. 
Uh, clients also have the ability to access that system to make reservations, so on and so forth. Um, we use it also if there's any local requirements for needing um, licensing records, things like that. It's all housed electronically in Ginger. We have a very uh, in-depth operations manual that I'm responsible for keeping, uh, keeping up, upkeep on, um, and lots of documentations and scripts really just for consistency throughout the brand. You can go to the next. All right, so cleaning protocols. This is uh, one of our most important principles at Canine Resorts. So um, I've been with the company for four years, and I've never had a complaint about smell when a customer walks into the building. It's, it's you know, really due to the, the disinfecting uh, qualities and the protocols that we have as a company. Um, we use two cleaners, uh, two, two main cleaners. One is Odor Pet. It is a uh, bacterial enzyme that breaks down organic material that would cause any odor or any sort of illness throughout the building. Um, that's used multiple times throughout the day, throughout every area that the dog is, dog's paws are touching. So that's daycares, boarding rooms, the lobby, the hallways, the entire building is um, inside, um, mopped down with odor pet. We also do use a foamer for the outdoor area. Once a day, every morning, uh, the team is out disinfecting the entire fence, all of the turf material, as well as the play equipment, every day with the odor pet. So that's breaking down any organic material that may have been left over. Um, our secondary uh, cleaner is called Rescue. It's a hydrogen peroxide based hospital grade cleaner. Um, again, used on the inside of the building and the outside. It kills every bacteria you can imagine. Um, we use it in liquid form, foamer form. We have wipes. Uh, every surface of the building is you know, cleaned, whether it's a daily clean or a full disinfection, uh, disinfecting when the dog checks out of their room. Um, in addition to using that same protocol in the outside area at night, we will, uh, once the dogs are out of the daycare and we've closed down for the public for the day, the outdoor area is fully disinfected with a hose down foamer of all the fence, again, the, the turf material, as well as the play equipment. That's on a daily basis. On a weekly basis, we actually rake up all the fur and dander and everything that's in the turf that may be you know, grabbing any bacteria, things like that, that's done on a weekly basis as well. For solid waste, because that's always a question that comes up, um, a dog poops in the yard, we pick it up immediately, it gets put into a biodegradable poop bag, put into a, another uh, contractor bag, and the contractor bag at the end of the day is removed, put into a dumpster that's on our property, and then that dumpster is removed multiple times, uh, cleaned, emptied multiple times a week as needed. Um, here's an example of the, uh, the protocols that we use, um, a turf cleaning system and what odor pet is used for the outdoor area. Um, <clears throat> about safety and care, so we do not have overnight staff and that is by design. Um, we want the dogs to feel rested uh, and be rested overnight. We have found in lots of research over the years that when there's on-site staff, they are cleaners, they're roaming around the building, they're agitating the dogs, dogs are curious by nature. The dogs are not resting overnight if you have overnight staff in the building. To overcome that, we have camera surveillance uh, available 24 seven for franchise owners and managers. They are not forward to the client. The customers cannot see the cameras, they're only internal. Um, we also have security <coughs> systems for burglars, um, you know, broken glass, uh, doors breached, things like that. Um, and also sprinklers and fire alarm services are a requirement of our brand. Uh, God forbid if a fire were to break out, these services would kick in uh, and you know, help with the situation. Um, we do require pest control. We require lo local veterinary partners in case a dog happens to get sick. Um, we have every resort has a local veterinary partner that signs off on our protocols. So in some areas, it's a requirement of our kennel license. We do partner with local care partners. So that uh, could be other trainers, local pet store owners, et cetera. And we do have vaccine requirements uh, for every dog that comes into the building. Those requirements are for rabies, distemper, parvo, bordetella, and canine influenza. 
This is also really exciting. A lot of questions uh, always come up about um, traffic and turnover in the parking lot, et cetera. So all of our guests are pre-registered through our, regist our registration system. We have all of the details of the stay, whether it's for daycare or boarding. So we know when the client is coming to check in, we know when they're checking out, we know, already know their, um, if, they have their, if they need any vaccinations, their medications, et cetera. So it's a very quick turnaround in our lobby when it comes to daycare. Um, our daycare check-in is less than 30 seconds. The client walks in with their dog, they hand the leash off to our pet care tech, the dog is in daycare, the customer's on their way. It's a little bit longer for boarding. The client is in the lobby for less than three minutes. They we're just recapping the reservation. Um, the dog is already in, its, in the play yard playing. The client's still in the lobby. We're just going through all of the, the details of the stay and they're on their way. Um, we, you can go to the next slide. This is an example of our hours of operation. So we have our pickup and drop off time dedicated to either daycare or boarding. And that's to avoid any sort of collision in the parking lot with a lot of people coming at the same time, especially when it comes to daycare. So our hours of operation Monday through Friday is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's for open to the public. Our team is in about an hour or two before, depending on the number of dogs that we have to take care of. Um, and they're in the building post-closing to making sure that the dogs are in their enclosure, happy and healthy for the end of the night. Our daycare check-in is from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then boarding check-in is from 9 to 5.30. And then our daycare check-out is from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. So we do communicate that to our clients to make sure that they know they're not coming in, in, <clears throat> in a window that they shouldn't be there. Obviously, we make adjustments if need be. On Saturday and Sunday, our building is open to the public 9 to 5.30. Um, and that's basically you can do daycare and boarding drop off because daycare isn't as busy on the weekends as it is during the week. Here's an example of our employee model, just making sure that we have the proper amount of staff. We do have protocols for that. Um, one important uh, of note is the more dogs that we have in the building, we have more staff on to watch them. So uh, I neglected to mention before during daycare, the dogs when they're in the daycare rooms are never unsupervised. We always have a pet care technician in every room where the dogs are off leash and they're playing. For every 20 dogs, we add another staff member. So if we have a room with 50 dogs, we'll have three staff members observing that large dog uh, group that's uh, in the daycares. Um, so this is an example of our employee mo manual uh, model from our manual. Next slide. And this is the last slide. This is really just showing the typical delivery. We don't get a lot of heavy trucks, no 18 wheelers. It's a Amazon Prime truck, a UPS truck, really just dropping off supplies on a weekly basis. Um, so we don't get a lot of um, commercial truck uh, traffic coming through the parking lot. Okay. Here's our seasonality map. So right now we're in that middle, that peak season. Uh, our, our calendar, our seasons kind of work around the school calendar. So when kids are out of school, families are on vacation, our boarding is at its maximum. Um, those yellow areas are when it's a transition phase between um, boarding and daycare, and those red areas are when we're more of a daycare focus and our occupancy for boarding is at its lowest of the year. What's the next one? Is that it? That is the last one. All right. That's the last question. That's the last slide. Happy to answer any questions. I know that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. Can you speak to the actual site plan and the layout of this particular? We can, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Application. Do you want to step in? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The site plan is. Um, <clears throat> So we were just actually there with the architects yesterday, but um, can you hear me? I can. Nobody how's, else can. How's that? Better? <laughs> yeah, so our play areas, because of the uh, slope of the land, our play areas will be on the north side of the building, as indicated uh, on the site plan there, uh, with large dog private play and small dog um, right there. Yep, so the entrance is uh, to the bottom of the screen. The play areas, uh, the outdoor play areas will be uh, built on the left side. Uh, they are right uh, where right now there's uh, grass in those areas and then we, the fence would go up to the existing sidewalk and we would keep the existing sidewalk coming from the building where there's an emergency exit 
and emergency exits off of the play areas onto the existing uh, pathway. And there would be, the only thing we would be doing to the exterior of the building are basically changing the color and making it look more like a, a traditional canine resorts, just some facade changes, but the actual structure itself, uh, nothing. So we'd basically just be adding fences uh, on the north side of the building there. Okay, and so for the dogs to get out to the various play areas, they'd come out how would they? Yep. How would that happen? So typically, uh, off the main entrance is obviously the lobby. Mm -hmm. There is usually a uh, a corridor uh, to the left there, or on both sides in this case, uh, of executive suites, and then there would be uh, on the opposite side of the outdoor large dog play area. There would be an equal uh, indoor play area with an overhead door for access uh, in and out. Same thing for the small dog and the uh, private play area. There would be uh, the equivalent uh, size indoor play areas and um, overhead doors or double doors that would, uh, that would be um, level. That would allow. In so sort of like doggy doors, they can go in and out as they want? No, no, they're no, human-sized they doors. Secured. Yeah. When, the, when the dogs are inside playing, those doors are secured and locked. They would not have access to just go in and out as they needed. Um, when it would be a designated time for the dogs to go out into the yard, then the pet techs would open the doors and then be monitoring the dogs in the outside area. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, so the... The daycare uh, client mm -hmm. uh, describe a typical day. Where are there separate suites where they hang out, or are they all together in a common room all day? How, how does that work for a daily daycare customer? Yeah. Yes. If your dog was approved for group play, group daycare. They would be in the either large or small, depending on the size of your dog, the weight of your dog. Um, they would be in an open room just like this, playing off leash with other dogs. That's that's the typical day um, that they would be, you know, and they and they go through their cycles just like kindergarten. The kids are playing, and then they're all napping, and then they're up and excited again. Um, but yeah, for the majority of the time, they are in a, a room just like this one, uh, playing off leash with their friends and then uh, we'll have opportunities during the day to go outside, run on the turf, use the facilities, uh, and then come <laughs> back inside. <clears throat> How many, is there a maximum number of small dogs and large dogs? What's the? We do, yes, we do. We set capacities based on, it varies by size of the building. So and for example, size, <laughs> yeah, this one. So this one, it would, you'd probably max out at about 90 dogs at a maximum amount of boarding. And that would translate to the same amount in total in for daycare. That would be inclusive of large and small. Um, we have a calculation of how many dogs can fit in a large dog daycare room. That's dictated by the size of it. Um, of the room so and the a, dogs? For the, the, yeah, so we'll say the, if the large dog area uh, playroom is 1,000 square feet, we would then take, you know, divide that by 18. We, our calculation is 18 square feet per dog, and that would be the maximum. For a large, large dog large or dogs. every dog? For large dogs. Small dogs is 12 square feet. And that is what dictates the, the capacity for those daycare rooms. And so if daycare is 90 dogs, how many suites for overnight um, That's that would, that would be the total for, for overnight as well. Total, total. Total, total. So combined... 90 dogs. Yeah, this location, this location at 8,000 square feet would have about 70 accommodations, and then we calculate about 20 to 25 percent of those families or dogs will have a family dog staying within the room. That's where I come up with the, the rough number of 90 based on this size building. Yeah, so I think uh, that was one of my questions too, because the the overnight boarding does affect the daycare capacity. So mm -hmm. if you say have 70 dogs in uh, boarding and they're all going into daycare, then you only have room for 20 additional Correct. daycare dogs. So that's the maximum capacity at any one time. Okay. Are they provided with a remote control for the TVs? 
<laughs> it's set to Dog TV as their favorite channel. We took yep. a poll. I'm thinking Animal Planet. But. We've done Animal Planet also. <laughs> um, okay, what's the procedure for outdoor cleaning in the winter? Uh, same protocols. So mm -hmm. you know, if there's snow we'll say, and you're going to get lots of it up here. Um, yeah. We do, you know, franchise owners, some franchise owners do either shovel it themselves um, or we'll get a snowblower. Typically they are, well, our protocol is to mound all the snow in the center of the yard, not up against the fences. So dogs can climb up the and over the fences. So the, it becomes play equipment in the winter, in the middle of the, uh, of, in the middle of the play yard. Uh, but the protocols remain the same. We still foam, we still hose down. Um, we just have to be a little bit more aware of freezing hoses and things like that without leaving them outside overnight. Mm -hmm. We bring the hoses in overnight um, into the building so they don't freeze up. But protocol still exists. Nothing changes depending on the weather. Okay. <clears throat> and how long each night is the building unattended? It, was it from, say, 8 p.m. till 6 a.m.? It, ten, on, about ten uh, yeah, hours. on a rough estimate, depending on the number of dogs and how long it takes for the the staff at the end of the night to make sure all the dogs have been fed and they've all had their last night uh, elimination. Um, but yes, typically from eight to eight eight p.m. to six p.m. in the mor uh, in the morning, the dogs will be um, in the building uh, unattended. Okay. Um, noise. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking 90 dogs outside if I'm a neighbor. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely concerned about, am I absolutely so listening to dogs 24-7? Yeah, uh, actually, I can, I can speak to that absolutely. because that was um, one of the things that was my concern because the last thing that I... When I grew up, we had a, a summer house in Brick, New Jersey. It was very small, and there was a pound nearby, and it was so annoying all the time because all you could hear were barking dogs. And that's typically what I have in mind when, when I think of a kennel. Um, I've done a lot of work with rescues and things like that, too. But one of the things that really was incredible was when I went to tour the four sites uh, that I saw in New Jersey was when you approach the building, there's no sound. When you're inside the building, there's no sound. And it, it doesn't look like dog, it doesn't smell like dog, and it certainly doesn't sound like it. Um, the way that the, when dogs are outside playing, they're typically quiet. Um, I was just with my friend at the Penfield Dog Park and she asked me the same thing and she answered her own question because she looked out and there were 20, 30 dogs running around but not making a sound. That's the norm. And, and a lot of the times, like Kevin said, we have some videos of this. Uh, Dogs are cyclical. They play and, and they run around and then a lot of the times they're quiet. But what we do to offset, say, a barking dog, a, bar a dog that's outside barking, the staff will be trained to immediately bring that dog inside mm -hmm. so that you can't hear that. Because the last thing that I want to bring to any community is something that's obnoxious or annoying or causing any kind of trouble. Um, so we bring that dog inside and if we find, we're gonna know every dog by name and who they are and, and by personality. And in recognizing that, now if we have this same dog that goes outside and is constantly barking, then we know that that dog can't socialize without barking outside. So that dog will go into the private area to go to the bathroom. And if they're inside and they're okay, but if they're really just too excited all the time, then that's a private play dog. And that's for every dog that comes into our facility. So I, I think I, I answered the question to the best mm -hmm. of my ability. Did I leave anything out? It's really uh, you know, an operation standpoint. But like I said, most of the time it, it's quiet. And the building, I don't, you didn't touch on this, the building itself is, I couldn't believe it. You walk up to the building, you wouldn't think there were any dogs in there. And then you walk in and you still can't hear anything. And you, you, you have the ability as a, as a yep. customer yep. To, yep. to see where your dogs stay. And then you can see this corridor of rooms and, and dogs are barking because they're, they're being fed or there's a person in there and you can't hear them. But then you open the door to go in and you can hear them. So the building is 100% soundproof and the outdoor things, dogs, a dog will bark once in a while, but we will manage that. We will take care of that because we don't want to be uh, a nuisance to anybody. We're trying to add to the community, not take away from it. 
Absolutely. So I can comment on the building itself. Uh, so within the perimeter walls and also the walls of the lobby, um, at really any built any wall in the building has an acoustic block material, which is a soundproofing material that goes over the uh, the framing. So there'll be um, insulation, framing, sheetrock, and then finishings on top of that, and that really helps stop the sound, as Mike was saying, bleeding out of any room um, into other areas of the building. Um, as I mentioned before, our construction, the roof, the, the walls themselves go all the way from floor up to roof deck to segregate any of those areas to keep any sound from bleeding up over the sound, the ceiling tiles. Uh, in addition to the sound panels, the acoustical ceiling tiles um, all, are, are all part of the um, sound mitigation that we have in the building, throughout the building. So would it be fair to say that you plan to gut the entire interior of the building and absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. reconstruct? And again, we didn't even uh, touch on the fence. That's why we use the fence that we use, the sound absorbing fence that's eight feet tall because typically a dog's about two feet tall. And that sound is at um, you know the level of the, the dog's mouth. And then we have an additional six feet plus the absorbing material. And the building itself on the south side um, uh, blocking any sound so and we have natural barriers of trees and everything but again we're hoping that we don't even need any of that because we will we will manage that okay and the other I guess obvious question would be odor for our neighbors downwind and mm -hmm. that sort of thing yeah as I mentioned our cleaning protocols our cleaning materials that we use handle all of that so um, odor pet is really the first line of, de of defense when it comes to mitigating the odor and that's the bacterial enzyme um, cleaning solution that literally just eats up organic material that would be odor causing issues. Um, in addition to us doing the full deep cleaning on a weekly basis of using that turf sweeper and that cleans up any fur or dander or anything that's trapped inside the turf, um, the grass itself, uh, that could cause any odor. But um, our cleaning protocols are, are very strict. We have checklists on mm -hmm. exact times during the day that the lobby, the hallways, everything needs to be mopped um, multiple times throughout the day to, to eliminate any opportunity for that to happen. Okay, what's the closest location that you have in operation to here? To here? There aren't any. Yeah, no, no, this will be the first thing. No, we have Long Island. Yeah. Uh, we have two operating in Long Island in New York. And then uh, yeah, New, New Jersey, Jersey, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Where in PA? Uh, Horsham, Pennsylvania, Malvern, Pennsylvania. So Philadelphia area. Philadelphia area, yep. We're going to be opening Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at the end of this month. So you have New Jersey, Philadelphia, any points west? like? Uh, out west, we've got operating in uh, Lone Tree, Colorado. It's outside of Denver. That's super Albuquerque, um, Chandler, Arizona. We have a location in Texas, um, Kansas. We're going to open in Arkansas this year. We have locations in Florida. So we're, we're spread out all over. And we just sold uh, territories in California in the LA market. Mm -hmm. But the closest to here would probably be Philadelphia. For, for, yeah, if you wanted to go visit one, absolutely. We will be opening in Greece, too, uh, in front of the Lowe's on Ridge Road. Okay. Those will be the two sites in Rochester. Is that, how far along is that? Same, same exact same. place that we're okay. in right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else on the yeah, board? Yeah, I, I had a few questions. The, the existing building has two levels, mm -hmm. is that correct? correct? So how is each level then 4,000 square feet? No, each level is uh, 8,000. Okay. We're not doing anything with the lower level other than gutting it. Okay. Yeah. So it's, um, as you walk in from the entrance, there, there's the main level, which is what is viewed here, and then the ground kind of slopes around and there's an outside exit, uh, but it's a lower level that we're, we're just gonna gut and clean okay. up a little so bit. So that just won't be used for at least the operation Correct. kind of thing. And I was just curious, the, the, um, the grease site, is that 
going into a existing building or is that a new build? Nope, it's an existing building. Uh, was The previous tenants were a dentist and uh, it was split. We're taking the whole building. Um, Verizon, it's right next to Chuck E. Cheese and Petco. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly? What's it cost? So for daycare and then for the boarding? Yeah. So it varies by location. Mm -hmm. um, currently, right now, a luxury suite uh, on the system average is anywhere from $92 to $95 a night. That's those rooms right off the lobby. An executive room. I'm sorry, I don't have a phone number. For <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. My cell phone or whatever is talking here. Um, executive rooms run from $75 up, and then compartments are around $62 to $69, depending if it's a single or double. Um, our daycare, our daily daycare, this is without a package, mm -hmm. starts around $42 right now, uh, system average. We do offer uh, discount packages of 10 days, 20 days, and 40 days. Uh, depending on that level of package, your daily daycare rate reduces. Okay. Um, so it's cheaper the more uh, packages you buy, mm -hmm. more days you buy. Yeah. Um, what, just curious, what made you decide Rochester with all your other locations? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from here, okay. and um, I, 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 could, I don't know how long you want to hear, but I, uh, my dogs have always, I'm not married, I don't have children, so my dogs have always been the, uh, really the center focus of my personal life. And I saw this and I, I just was like, this is, this is really cool, it's beautiful, I, I want to learn more about this. And um, so I started, I applied and, and went through the interview process and a couple months later I was approved. Um, and, and it's just what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I think, um, I, I don't know, I travel to a lot of places, I lived in South Florida for a while. and. We we have some of the nicest people in the world here, and we don't always have the the places like this that the other markets have. Um, and, and I'm excited to bring it here, and I, I think it'll do. Um, I really think it'll add a lot to the community. And from a price point, we want to stay right in line with the um, uh, you know paws and claws and, and camp bow wow. We don't want to. I, I don't know. I. I when I saw this and I visited it, it was like my, my lab of 15 years passed away two years ago. Um, and if we had something like this, I would have let her stay there. And my, I never boarded her. I always struggled to find people to come to the house, but this is the kind of place that it is and the kind of place that you know I'll operate. Nice. It's, it's a really special place, truly. I mean, I've witnessed it myself. I've worked for the company for four years. I come from a retail background. I never boarded my dogs before. Yeah, no way. Um, had I known K9 was uh, in existence, I definitely would have boarded my dogs there. Um, but you, you literally see dogs run to the front door because they're excited to be there. Um, and that's really a testament to Stephen and Jason that created this great brand where dogs want to be rather than trying to put the brakes on when they're going to the vet or going to the groomer that they're nervous about going there. You literally see dogs getting excited to get out of the car and go in because they're going to be enjoying their day and enjoying their day with their friends. Nice. Yeah, it, it, it looks like the Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> you would think it's for, for people because, like I said before, it doesn't look anything like it would be for pets. It doesn't smell like pets. It doesn't sound like pets. And it's just, they've, these guys have done an amazing thing. And some of those things you didn't touch on were, uh, you did a little bit about their, their operations and the way that they make sure that, the, that I am, am doing what they want us to do is they have secret shoppers that come in on a weekly basis to make sure that the resort is quiet, smells good, and is clean, and that, uh, that we're doing what they want us to do, or they'll yank the franchise out from underneath us. And it's a, that's in our franchise agreement. So they stay on top of us. Not that you will need to, but, um, they, but they do. <laughs> I just have two more questions. Sure. Yep. Um, so you mentioned the security cameras. Yes. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the dogs aren't supervised at night. You have the cameras. Are the cameras able to be shifted so that every kennel is covered by the security camera at night, or how you does that view, work if there's an emergency? You have, an overview, you have a view of the entire room okay. itself. There's not a camera in each individual enclosure. Um, 
that would be cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's it's more so of just you have access to some rooms. You can see some rooms. All the rooms have glass. There's glass along the top, and the doors have glass. So you are able to see within the rooms. Um, Honestly, one that's in the far corner, you won't have great, you know, the best visibility to. You will see if a dog escaped out of its room um, somehow. You know, it's never <laughs> happened, but you never know, never say never. Um, but, you know, it, there's not a camera in each individual room, but there are cameras throughout the building in all the boarding rooms in the lobby and around the perimeter just to um, make sure the building is secure and safe. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> Um, and the only other thing is you had mentioned that um, you, the, the siding of what the building is going to look like, are you going to supply us with the example of what the, what the building is going to actually look like once it's completed? Yeah, we'll do building elevations. The, our yep. architect was just here this week. Yesterday. Uh, yesterday, actually. And uh, they're going to be providing a sketch plan to Mike. Um, and along with that will be an elevation plan of what the building will look like. The, the building itself isn't going to change. Um, it may be a lighter beige color, but yeah. you know the materials, the facade of the building itself will not change. Okay. <clears throat> we had a picture of, um, I, I don't know if you guys still have it, I sent those in of, of what a, one of the existing canines looks like so you can get an idea of what uh, they look like from the outside. That's, that's <clears throat> our building, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them. Yep. That's uh, which one is that? That's, that's Cherry Hill. That's Cherry Hill. That's Cherry Hill, that's, New Jersey. That's one of the older ones, but it's typically that color. Uh, that that front door is a brand standard, and those the, the the window colorings are are for the windows that are going along the side of the build or the front of the building. There, that's um, that's typically what you'll see. Uh, the newer uh, builds look a little bit different, but you can get an idea of of what will. Well, yeah, there's yeah. one. That's the Hamilton locations. Those, they have a stucco feel to them. Mm -hmm. um, all of them are around the same beige color. Mm -hmm. um, I believe this, this site has a, a rock facade or something, if I remember correctly. There's a retaining wall. Retain um, okay. But yeah, and then we have the, obviously the drive through the carport. Right. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll keep all of that intact. We'll keep everything the way it is. We'll just might add some elevation to it, but we'll submit everything and, and go from there. We'll yes. try to make it look as beautiful as we can. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah. I, I have one yeah. question. <coughs> so with respect to sound transmission, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, there's really two ways that we measure sound transmission coefficient. Mm -hmm. So one is with wall and vertical and horizontal assemblies that have been tested in a sound laboratory. Mm -hmm. The other way is field testing. Have any of the jurisdictions that you've applied for required you to do field testing to determine what kind of sound transmission is occurring from the interior to the exterior of the building? We have done sound tests at our flagship in Fanwood. I'm happy to provide the results of that test. Um, there have not been any other locations, to my knowledge, that have required it. Um, more so, it's been traffic studies uh, rather than sound studies. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to provide the, the results you of the test from our family location. To Doug and and uh, um, you know we'll we'll put this in our in our tabling resolution. But um, we'll ask your architect to provide us sure. with the sound transmission class of all of the assemblies and the windows. Uh, okay. Because yeah, that's easy. Absolutely. A, a lot more sound transfers through the windows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. I Okay. I just there. got a couple. Okay, so Mike, you, you chose this area because you reside here? Is it? Yeah. So that's how we came to... Yeah, I'm uh, here in Buffalo. Our, yeah, they, we'll, we'll try to open the two in Rochester first, and then maybe four years down the road, something like that, maybe we'll go to Buffalo. Okay, and you've been down to the park, our dog park? I have. Yeah. So now, how do you guys choose a, an area like where this location is compared to like a more park setting? That would, to me, to me be more conducive, I guess, the dogs around. Well, we look at a few things. So demographics are, you know, our first uh, thing that we look at as far as a search territory for a franchise. Um, ease of um, commuting to. 
So we want to make it in. We don't have to be on Main and Main. We're not a bank or a McDonald's where we need to be on you know the, a street corner uh, in the middle of town. Um, but we do want to be located where it's advantageous for a client to go on a daily basis to drop their dog off for daycare um, and not have them go out of their way um, for a daily daycare customer or for a boarding customer. Mm -hmm. I know Mike has driven the market pretty extensively. Um, a few months ago, I went on a tour with him and you know, we both looked at this site and the Greece site and you know, determined these are, this would be great locations for us. And, and me personally, I like the fact that both here and Greece are freestanding buildings. They're on their own, whereas a lot of their locations are uh, in line or in a, a, a shopping center, mm -hmm. like uh, Mount Pleasant is in an old Rite Aid attached to a grocery store. Um, I mean, if that's all that's available, that's I guess that's okay. But I like this to me is on <coughs> three acres or two acres. That, that to me is kind of like a park-like setting. It's you know set back from the road. It's set back from the other buildings. Um, it has a nice entrance. You can do some nice landscaping to really make it beautiful to pull into. And that's why I like this site. We looked at the uh, gymnastics center uh, basically right across the street, too, uh, behind Starbucks there. But I didn't like that as much because that would be a shared use. Uh, the building was too big for us. Now, what about Buffer? you got neighbors behind you, right? Mm -hmm. Over here. Uh, no, uh, there's only there's there's the front building, which is now uh, Rochester Regional Health on the on the um, West side, there is the creek, and there's a tree line. There's a, an office building back there, and then there's some way back. Uh, there, there's some houses. Um, it is important to to know, yeah, way way back over there. Um, but you know, the Fanwood location backs up to residential, and mm -hmm. so do a lot of uh, these. But there's, like I said, these guys have done everything right to to ensure that everybody is happy. That's the, that's the key. You have to have happy neighbors, happy town, happy customers uh, to the best of our ability. I'm not, I'm not going to put anything anywhere where I'm going to have to be fielding phone calls all day from people that are upset with me. There's too much to manage as it is. Um, what about uh, now if you don't get the, you need a variance, at least one, how many variances do you think you're going to need for the whole? application we we need uh, a variance for the fence height because we have we're uh, uh, part of the zone we need a special use permit too um, but for the uh, for the fence height because the it's zoned at uh, six feet and we're eight feet so now what if you don't get it from we we have one location that has uh, we have a, a an item called dog proofer which is an attachment that goes on the top of an eight-foot fence so it essentially curves out above the top of the fence on the interior side of the of the yard to keep a dog. A dog can jump over a six foot fence. So this dog keeper keeps them from being able to breach over the fence. I like dogs, I hate dogs. <laughs> My thing is uh, like uh, Jim mentioned, the sound mm -hmm. issues. Are, are you familiar? There's one in Henrietta, a dog hotel. Yes, or, yeah, yeah, Green Valley is over there. Mm -hmm. You've been there? Uh, I've driven by it, yes. By it. It's across from Wegmans. It's, uh, what's that? Never any dogs barking? Not when I've driven by, no. Yeah. I have. That's why I was going to tell you, if you haven't seen it, well, you get it down, you should check it, and the rest of the board also, mm -hmm. because I'm in Henrietta quite a bit, and I can hear it when I pull off of East Henrietta Road to go in the back there. That, I never knew it was there until I drove out there one time. And uh, Yeah, and again, that to me comes down to an operation uh, standpoint. If they're just letting dogs out in the play area, and they're out there barking and causing all sorts of noise, that, that shouldn't be allowed to happen, and these guys don't allow that to happen, and right. I won't either. And I, don't, I didn't look at it that closely. All I know is I drove down it and asked what it was, and they said there was the, uh, you know. Yeah, they have a. Uh, a dog's care center. I did look at their, their facility online. It's a big building, and it's a very, very large grass outdoor area. So the reason that we don't have, we have 1,000 square feet of outdoor area for large dogs and about 1,000 square feet for the small dogs. If you give dogs free room to run, like at the park, um, that becomes less manageable. You have to be able to stay on, aware of everything and on top of everything. And if there is an issue, like I said, with a barking dog, the staff member has to be able to get that dog right away and bring him inside and know that dog and know that we can't, we have to keep an eye on that dog because that's, like I said, to me, that was the first thing that I thought of. Um, the only other thing is like, you know, once you guys decide on it, you know, you'll need parking. I think if you have all these people coming up and dropping their dogs off in the morning. 
No. Yeah, this site has plenty of parking. So our maximum or really requirement is 20 parking spaces, um, 10 for staff and 10 for clients because they're the turnover and the spots are very quick. But they have to drop got, them off, right? I mean, they have they, to literally get out of their car. They do. Take their mm -hmm. Yeah, for daycare, it's a 30-second transaction. And like we said, if there's, uh, depending on the, the time of year, so say our capacity is, is 90, and we're never we're not going to be at 100% unless it's a holiday time. So say we're at 80%, so 18 off that, you have 72. Say half of those are overnight dogs, so that's 36. So you have 36 daycare customers coming in between the hours of 7 and 9, and then again between 5 and 7. So all 36 people aren't going to be there at the same time, so we don't require that much parking. Our fan with location seven is just under 17,000 square feet and has eight parking spaces for customers, mm -hmm. and there's never an issue. And then lighting, you'll have lighting on the outside, I'm sure. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Sure you address that issue. But. Yeah, we will. But I mean, that building was just, I was there yesterday, it was, it was vandalized, and we were hoping to get in there to avoid things like that, and we'll definitely have all sorts of uh, security to make sure that everybody's safe and the building is safe. Okay, I'm good right now, thank you. I had one more oh, question. Sorry. Sure. Uh, following up on, Kelly asked about the overnight video mm -hmm. system that's in there. Does that also monitor sound in the building? And if the sound level was to escalate, mm -hmm. does it alarm to anybody, staff? It's an excellent question. I don't think we have any locations that have sound, but our partner with our security is ADT. I'm sure that they've got some solution for that, that if it was a requirement, we can certainly put that yeah, in. I'm just, I don't know, thinking yeah. if things got out of hand inside from an audio point mm -hmm. of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I've- they I've have a party closed. or something? <laughs> yeah. So it's you never know. And... <laughs> that's actually, that was, that's a good question. That was one of the first, thoughts that I had after the sound, after uh, learning about this, was there's really, there's no overnight staff. And I, I was like, well, that doesn't really make any sense to me. And then when I went to visit, I understood because if dogs are in their individual rooms, they're quiet. And as soon as a person walks into that corridor, one dog will start barking and the rest will. So if there's an issue, if, there, if, if it's nighttime and the music's on quietly and the lights are off, those dogs are gonna be asleep. The only time that they're gonna engage in um, partying is if, uh, is if there's something uh, startles them. And if right. there's nothing going on in the building, then they're just gonna sleep, uh, which is great for dogs because they require like 12 or 14 hours mm -hmm. of sleep a night or a, in a 24 hour period. So um, it requires them to get the rest that they need. And I, I, like I said, I, these guys have taught me a lot about, and the assumptions that I had were uh, those they were wrong and my questions were answered too. Yeah, I and mean, that's the beauty of our all-inclusive boarding is that the dogs are active all day long in daycare. So when they're after their morning breakfast and they've had a relaxing, you know, their relaxation period, they're in daycare for the day. And then they come out of daycare around six o'clock, they're having their nighttime meal, they get, they get put out one more time before they're, you know, tucked in at bed at night. Um, the nighttime staff does a security check throughout the building, make sure all the dogs are happy and healthy. We turn off all the lights. We have spa-like music playing in the, uh, throughout the resort. It's a very calming environment for the dogs and literally you do not hear a peep when we're, we're shutting down at the end of the night because yeah. the dogs have had a long day of, of play. And you know, I, yeah, I had a franchise owner, uh, the guy in Houston, send, I, because I knew uh, sound would be a question. Unless you physically see it, you're just taking my word for it. Um, so I asked him to send me a couple of videos of what the play yard looks like, and I have those on my phone. I wonder if I can get them over to you so you can show everybody what t the dogs are typically doing. It's not going to be what you want to see because you think your dog's going crazy at daycare all the time, but they're literally just wandering around and hanging out. So if I can get those over to you, I will, or we can play them tonight. Um, and, and then you can see what it looks like on it okay. most of the yeah. time. I mean, if I can handle Yeah, here, I'll, get, I'll grab you my phone. Yeah. If you can send them okay. to... Um, the uh, planning email address. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. I have a minute long. I'll try to get it. 
Wonder how big the files are. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best. Well, we can't hurt to try, right? Yeah. Yeah, why not just uh, send them to Doug? We don't necessarily have to. We can. Okay. Because we'll want to see elevations and some of the architecturals. Um, just email it to Doug. What's that? Just email it to Doug then? Oh, to planning. Email to planning at penfield.org. That goes okay. to our planning department. Uh, so. Any okay. questions from the board at this time? No. Nope. Okay. I'd like to open it up to the audience. And again, if you're not here, you can call in at 585-340-8771 or visit penfield.org and submit your comments electronically. We do have someone who filled out the uh, paper, Mr. Popley. Yes. Like, come on up here, uh, grab a chair, give us your name and address and for the record. And then let's... Uh, Love to hear what you have to say. Yes, my name is Om Popley. Uh, I have been a. We have an office just very close to this one. Within, I would say within maybe less than 50, 50 feet of the facility. It's the to the northeast, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the building you can see right there. And in addition to that. Uh, we have an easement access through this parcel to the plaza. Obviously, the easement is not very much impacted, but we are concerned about the facility itself. Uh, we have been here in this facility for almost 30 years. <clears throat> and we have seen this intersection grow and change over 30 years. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure any one of you remember Phil Channing, who was a supervisor. Yes. Years ago. And he was very proud of his intersection. He said the best thing could happen to Penfield is this intersection. The 250, 441? 441 and 250. And we were part of the improvement of that intersection working for DOT. So your easement was part of the LUAMP? Pardon? Your, your easement in, was part of the LUAMP study, the Land Use Access Management Plan? I'm not really sure your question, sir. Uh, so the, it's just back at that time, there was a land use and access oh, management yes. Oh, plan yes. I, I was going to go through that. The overall. There was a party house years ago. Yes, hospitality house. Which was house. for <clears throat> bedding, everything else. When the party house got sold, there was an improvement to the parcel, and we were assured this is being used for office use. It would not be zoned for anything else. So this whole parcel, whatever the number is, the number of acres are there, and if you see on the improvement there, there's a parcel A, B, C. Parcel C is still zoned as an office building. And over the years, we have seen this whole thing changed. I know <coughs> the owner of this property a year or so ago tried to push for car wash. Just about a year or so ago, tried to put a car wash with the urgent care there. And there was a lot of opposition. Uh, I applaud the facility. It's a great facility. Uh, the, the facility at the convenience that dogs have, I'm not really sure a lot of residents of this country have that kind of facility available. But I, from that point of view, I really appreciate it. <clears throat> I, I wish more people, more citizens would have that kind of facility than the dogs. Uh, coming back to the dogs itself, uh, as the gentleman mentioned, it's a two-floor building, about 8,000 8, square feet. We looked at this building a couple of years ago as a part of our expansion and somehow it didn't work out with the owner. So that's where we are back there. And I'm concerned about the facility having 90 dogs on an 8,000 square foot area. That's my biggest concern. Dogs are dogs. They are not human beings. You cannot control how they react. They can react nicely and they can be other way around. So I'm concerned, I don't know how much control we have on the animals. 
we employ about 70, 80 people from 7.30 to about 6.30, and I'm concerned about our image of so the company. So is the concern if a dog gets loose and the dogs running the around, dog or barking, is it the noise? Noise. Okay. noise. I'm concerned about the noise. You go to Lollipop Farm, mm -hmm. it's a great location, sits away from the build, away from the road, serves its purpose, and people enjoy it too. But I'm not really sure this is the place. It's right in the center of the town. We are trying to Im improve the intersection. The plaza was in a mess for a number of years until recently when Rochester Regional Health improved it. You don't want to go backward. You want to go forward. I like to, there's a lot of room available on the east side of this facility. Go about a mile east. There's a lot of plenty of land available, open land available. I think this facility should be used, or should be there where it's a proper area. Not just because in the middle of the shopping area, you got Aldi's on one side, you got a University of a Medical Center on the other side, you got a regional center, we are in the northeast corner, then you got a big plaza <coughs> there, Aldi store. I'm not really sure this is the right place for this facility, even though it's a nice facility. So from that point of view, I express my concern of locating this facility at this location. Okay. okay. Uh, I see some operational difficulties. Putting eight feet fence, putting a noise barrier in the middle of the town. Are we driving a traffic pattern to keep the town? And even eight foot, I'm not really sure you can control the barking of the noise at eight feet level. That's, that's another concern I have. Winter time, uh, I was looking at the sketch, it's about 20 by 30 feet area. When it, stores in the, when it snows, I'm not really sure how they're gonna maintain it, how they're gonna clean it, they, how they're gonna blow it, where they're gonna blow it. It's not an open area. You cannot shovel eight feet high. To get the snow out from there, you cannot shovel eight feet high. Right. You need to find a way to how to get it out. So given all these things, I mean, not against the facility, but there's a right place for each facility. I would not like to see right in the middle of the shopping plaza. You want to improve the shopping plaza. You don't want to de detract people from coming down there. In addition, we see, I see a lot of traffic from my building, <clears throat> through my building, onto the plaza. The kids, adults, they go and shop there. And they use par our parking lot to go to the area. So I'm not really sure how this is going to impact the residents at Pembroke. Uh, that's my con another concern. But more important is my own personal concern, my office concern <clears throat> in the sense, because you don't want to, we are a professional organization. We employ 70, 80 people in that office, architects, engineers, land surveyors, other people. So I just want to make sure we don't have our visitors come in here, employees come in here, future employees come in here. They see the facility, the dog is barking, may not be barking. And their timing from 7.30 to 7.30 is exactly what our timing is there. We are usually there from 7.30 till about 6 o'clock. So the peak time. And at night time, if there's no operation, I'm not really sure how it's going to work out. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. It looks good on the paper, good to look on the paper thing, but the facts on the grounds are different. You got to see, you approve it, see it doesn't work, you cannot disapprove it. You're stuck with that. Right. So those are my comments. I have sent a little note to Doug to pass it on to you. Yes. And my final comment would be, uh, if any of you, any of the rep audience, would like to live and work near the facility, then use your conscience to approve or disapprove it. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone else in the audience like to comment on this application? Betsy? I'm, I'm, I'm 
part of the team. I'm the, the B team, though. Jerry Goldman was supposed to be here and had a conflict tonight, so I'm stepping in here for him. But I just thought it was worth pointing out, um, as the board very well knows, this is a conditional use permit. Name, address. I'm sorry. <laughs> Betsy Brug, Woods Oviak. Should Goldman. know the drill. Sorry. <laughs> Get a little too excited there. Um, so yes, I mean, the board knows this is a conditional use permit. Um, you know, we looked at the at the standards. You had very legitimate questions. I think the question is, does this project have any impact on any neighboring uses? And I think they've tried to give you all their protocols and their data to demonstrate that. And certainly, we need to satisfy the board. But I just want to point out, um, in case anybody's forgotten, that this is the limited business district. It's not actually an office zoning. We are in a zoning district that sits between uh, multiple residents and. Um, uh, the general business district, and the uses permitted without a conditional use permit in this district are, are actually, some of them are quite a bit more intense than what's being proposed here. Um, grocery stores, laundry mats, uh, drug stores, I mean, we know what all these uses look like today. They're large commercial, commercial uses with a lot of traffic, a lot of vehicles, long hours, sometimes 24 hours, um, drive-throughs often. Um, <coughs> hardware stores, garden supply stores, so I'm assuming we're talking about uses that have outdoor storage, outdoor activities. We're talking about out uses like bakeries, uses that have food that could actually attract other types of uh, wildlife. I mean, we're talking about uses that are much more intense in nature. Liquor stores, um, auto accessory parts. Um, mm -hmm. Among the conditional uses, we have sit-down and take-out restaurants, gasoline service stations. And the conditional uses are, by definition, uses that are legislatively deemed uh, consistent with the zoning. So this isn't, while I appreciate that there are other office uses, and certainly we need to fit within the context, and that is the purpose of going through the conditional use permit process, um, you know, it's our job to demonstrate that we won't have any impact, and I think that we are trying to give you that um, evidence, but just remember what district we're in, and that we are in the heart of the commercial area. and. The service they provide is actually, you know, consistent with the purpose of the limited business district. We're here to serve the residential needs of the community. It's the residents of the town that are going to use this facility. People care a lot about their pets. Um, I'm thinking, I don't think I've ever put my kids anywhere this nice, <laughs> you know? So, um, so anyway, so I just wanted to point out and just remind the, uh, the board that certainly we want to address all of your questions. and provide all the information that you need to um, make a decision, but I just want to remind you what zoning district we're actually in and that uh, we're not in an office zoning district. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else in the audience? Let me just check and see if anybody's called in. Doesn't look that way. <clears throat> Let's see if there's any electronic submissions. Uh, there being none, okay. Thank you very much. Any closing statements? Um, I think Mike, anything from fairly comprehensive no, presentation. Thank you all. Can, can I just be clear? You had asked about some. You had asked for some information, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Just want to make sure we know exactly what we need to provide. You want to, yeah. yeah. He's going to provide okay. that field sound report from another facility Perfect. to Doug. Yes. Okay. Huh? I was going to check to see if that email went through. It was like 50-something megabytes, so I doubt it. But right. I'll, try, I'll get it to you guys one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Doug? All right. Moving on to application number two. Application number two, MRB Group, 145 Culver Road, Suite 160, Rochester, New York, 14620, on behalf of Jennings, Knowlton, and Maddell hey, Funeral Home. Let, Doug, let me yep. just pause you for one more second okay. and comment again, make an announcement that uh, if anybody had tuned in or came in at 7 o'clock for the public hearing and is, is expecting to uh, witness applications three and four, the applications for 1345 Shoecraft Road. The applicant has requested to be postponed. They need time to gather additional information. And when, uh, and if they come back, they will be re-advertised and plenty of additional notice uh, to schedule that application. So that, that applicate, those two applications will not be will not be heard tonight. I just talked to the office on Monday and they wanted to 
did you know this then? Uh, this was a recent, uh, yesterday, I believe yesterday afternoon, I believe they, they Yeah, they requested a postponement Requested yesterday. the postponement. Well, so, I, so. Um, I called Monday because I've had major surgery and I'm not sure I was even going to be able to come with my neighbors brought me for that particular hearing. She was supposed to send me an updated um, plan because I've been at the other hearing before this same application. And I still have not received it. So she knew that I was going to be coming. Did okay. We did then mail out the plan on Tuesday. I believe the post office usually takes about two to three well, I, days, I, I, even I, with. She said I would have it the next day, and I knew that would happen. I was hoping it would come at least today, and it did. But at least somebody knew I was going to be coming, and that I had a problem in being able to come. And still, nobody notified us, and here we are. Uh, sorry. sorry about that. All right, uh, application number two, MRB group, uh, Culver Road, Suite 160, 14620, on behalf of Jennings, Knowlton, and Mattel Funeral Home, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 and Article 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan and conditional use permit approval for the proposed redevelopment of the uh, existing funeral home building, parking area, and a new driveway entrance to Penfield Road on 1.415 acres located at 1704 Penfield Road, Penfield, New York, 14526. The property is now or formerly owned by Jeffrey Jennings and zoned business non-retail, BNR. Application number 23P-0010, SBL number 139.05-1-47. Okay, welcome. We all set? Oh. Quick, quick correction. Quick correction. Oh, Jeffrey and Robin Jennings. We don't, we don't want to leave her out. She owns it. Too. Boss. <laughs> the boss. And Canandaigua National Bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smart move. Yeah. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Schreiner from MRB Group. Uh, as Jeff stated, uh, when we, with uh, Jeff Jennings and his wife Robin, uh, owners of the property. Uh, we're speaking about the Jennings Knowlton uh, Mattel Funeral Home located at uh, 1704 Penfield Road. It's about a 1.4 acre site, zoned uh, business non-retail, uh, and in its current use is a funeral home. And it intends to go on being a funeral home. God willing. <laughs> uh, what we are proposing uh, in the, we've developed over the last couple of years, uh, they wanted to upgrade their facilities to make it more user friendly, spruce it up a little bit because it has it's been some time. And what we are uh, proposing is uh, on the existing building, uh, as far as the site is concerned, I'll speak on that. Uh, the we are looking to leave the building mostly in its in its existing condition. Uh, with the exceptions to the exterior. Uh, we plan to uh, reconstruct the garage area of the facility. Uh, that is mostly due to the increased size of the car fleet that they need for funerals. Uh, we want to enclose the existing open air entrance, which is located on the south side of the building. Right now it's, it's, uh, it's covered by roof and it's just an outside area. We're gonna close that office, office and uh, some interior space uh, to the building. Uh, we wanna modify- so it's the area where most people walk in? Yeah, there yes. off the parking lot where those mm -hmm. arches are <clears throat> to enclose that for, um, uh, uh, we retain it as an entrance off the parking lot, but we really, as you'll see in our plans, kind of, transition more to the main entrance of the building being in the front of the building. Um, okay. So that, the, the footprint, as Paul said, the footprint of the building really won't change. It'll be mostly interior or enclosing that um, little 
as Mel Nolan used to call it, a loggia. I don't know if that's what it is or not. That's what he always called it, little porch area. So. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I, I didn't mean to screw up your mojo. No, that's okay. It's okay. He's entitled. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also want to modify the. Uh, I want to say the front entrance, which faces Penfield Road, which showed on this uh, photograph right here to uh, we want to modify it to direct most of the traffic in there and provide a more accessible path from the parking lot into the building. Uh, that part of the building, the roof, the roof line will be extended over a six foot uh, wide sidewalk go in the building provide you know shelter for rain and snow and the nice weather we have here in Rochester uh, also uh, there will be improvements to the building uh, exterior uh, I would say a, a new a new uh, look look Facade. for the whole building uh, and I think I think with the submittal package we provided some architectural rendering for the building uh, what, what he's proposing uh, the and I talked about the covered uh, sidewalk in the front as far as anything outside the building uh, we've added some parking to the front of the building and a uh, exit only uh, new driveway exit to Penfield Road uh, this is just to provide a little additional parking to the for the building, an increase from 46 uh, to 58 spaces, and uh, a uh, increase of 12 spaces. But that will be a, a, a solely a one-way access out. The existing entrance will still remain a two-way in and out. Uh, we also plan to um, exit uh, add add additional drainage in the front uh, we we talked with town staff a while ago and they want to uh, provide some sort of mitigation for the new pavement in the front of the building so that's why we have a, a small collection basin uh, for for bioretention and discharge to the existing storm sewer system along Penfield Road in addition we are going to provide some site lighting uh, the primary, what we're going to have is two lights in the main uh, new parking area, which are shown here. But uh, after we submitted this plan, we discussed further some lighting, and we would like to provide an additional light uh, in the main parking area. Uh, all, all the lighting that we're proposing is down lighting. It will be the same, same lights as, as what we have here. There's 16 foot. Uh, high poles uh, with down lighting and with no lighting contours leaving the site. Uh, this this site is naturally in a I want to say a bowl type. The, the the grade goes up the hill to the south, and uh, so I don't I don't think the light is going to be an issue as far. As, as far as the site's concerned, but we want to provide one additional light for uh, a little help in the parking lot. The, so that'd be uh, another the, pole. Which is not shown on here. That'd be another pole mounted. Yes. Yeah. So Just to match the uh, two that are there. So if you see where the center of the, where those two new handicap spots are, if you yep. came towards the, the uh, road, towards Penfield Road there, the light would be, keep coming to the grassy area, the light would be maybe to the right a little bit with your cursor, right around right in there. that area to light that end of the parking lot. Okay. There is already a pole further back on the hill to light the back, or the back side of the parking lot, and there are some lights on the building that um, illuminate the back of the parking lot and some of the of the side, but the end towards the uh, towards Penfield Road where your cursor is now, that that part of the parking lot, it's just a little dark. So we'd like to add a pole there for again a, a down a down lighting. And we're not a fan of even on the building. We're not a fan of lights on the ground shining up. Don't don't get, do you any good in this part of the country when you have a foot of snow on the ground. So. Uh, any new lighting on the building would be from the eaves shining down. Um, one additional item uh, that uh, was submitted 
we are, we are planning landscaping around the building. Uh, that was a late submittal to staff, and I think you've probably gotten a copy of that. Right there. Already. Yep. <coughs> so that's, we're, we're, we're just enhancing what's already there. Um, <coughs> one additional item that we're, it's going to happen, there's a sign uh, for the building uh, that it's located to the left of the existing entrance. We plan to relocate that to the right side of the existing entrance. It's a little more open. Uh, we have we have that uh, storm structure in the front that's going to be con in conflict. There's a tree right there. We're just going to move it on the other side, make it uh, and do some landscaping around that entrance sign. So it would be relocated from one side to the other side. Um, Yep. I so, guess that's the, the the quick summary of what we're proposing. From there to the other side of the driveway. And uh, we're before you tonight to request uh, site plan appro <laughs> approval, preliminary and final site plan approval, uh, and and uh, ex the uh, reestablishment of the <coughs> additional use permit for the project. Apparently, that can be assigned to the planning board. For approval, and uh, we are uh, on the schedule for next Thursday to be in front of the, of the zoning board of appeals because the new garage building, is, even though it's in the same footprint, violates the side side and rear setback requirements. So uh, we are going to be appearing before them next week, and. Uh, We'd like to get some, hopefully get some positive feedback for that application from you people. Um, we, we, try, we tried, I'll interrupt just a moment. We tried not to need that setback zoning uh, uh, variance. Um, I did approach Bob Hurlbert and asked about buying eight feet of his property <coughs> along the property line, and he wanted nothing to do with that. So uh, unfortunately we now have to Get the variance. So, in uh, well, it's pre existing non conforming, so right, but now we're taking away the head and putting something, you know, but it's very similar as far as setbacks concerned. With when you consider the garage and the little storage shed there, it's going to mm -hmm. be pretty much the same footprint. Um, in, in addition to that, uh, <coughs> Penfield Place, I think, uh, <coughs> Should be sent it to. Sent a letter from Penfield Place to the, to the board. Uh, they're aware of the project, and they acknowledge that there may be some access from uh, to do the work. That we're going to restore it, and uh, they just don't want it to block the exits for their uh, facility. Just health, safety, and welfare of their clients. Sure. And uh, but we did make that contact, and it looks like. They're, it doesn't say, oh, yeah, we're in they're support, not but they're not, opposed. they're not opposed to it. <clears throat> they're not here. They, they're they're just, aware of it. They just didn't want to sell me the property. <laughs> right. well, so that's where we stand right now. And uh, I don't I don't have anything more to add unless you do, Jeff. You want to talk any, about, uh, give a, a little rundown of building. So, so the building was built, and, you know, I know many of you have been there. Um, for one reason or another, but the building was built in 1962 uh, as a funeral home. It was not a building that was converted like an old home. Like we have a home, we have a funeral home in East Rochester as well. It was an old home converted. This was built by Mel and Joanne Knowlton in 1962 as a funeral home. It was remodeled in, I was not working there then, but I want to say 83, maybe 84. Uh, an addition was put on, several additions. Um, now it's this many years later, um, we're, we're at a point where um, our daughter is actually coming into the business with us and for longevity of continuing to serve the community, we just need, it's, it's time to, you know, update the, the facilities again <laughs> and give it a facelift. Yes, good idea. I mean, and, and we're not going to, like the, the garage that we want to remove, as you see on the picture here, it's a, it's a metal sided building with a flat roof. God bless you. Um, the shed is in bad shape so that that will all be taken down 
the new garage will encompass where the shed is. So it's the same footprint. It will just be all new garage space. The garage that's there now, if you, I don't know if you can go around to the front of the building, it's two double doors and one single door. It will in the shed. This now, now it will be three double doors. Um, so um, the look of the building will completely be changed. Um, we, we said we don't want to do this project and then have people drive down Penfield Road and say it's the same old building. Um, we're looking, if you see the exterior uh, renderings, putting, um, what do you call it, hardy board is what you worked with? Siding. Ha hardy board siding, siding um, and some cedar shakes and the same idea and some stone work. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a, should have brought a sample of what we're looking at. Of, of a, it's a, gonna be a dark bluish gray as opposed to the white that we have on the building now. Um, so there's kind of the, the, f the face of the building as we hope to envision it. Entertain any questions, concerns? Kelly, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Thank you for the presentation. Sure. Um, so my question, I understand that you're just removing the existing garage and the shed and putting the larger garage. Um, it says that you're gonna remove that timber wall also. Yes. Are you also gonna take out the landscaping and is that gonna affect the drainage? Like what is the purpose of the timber wall right well, now? The timber wall actually, I don't know what the purpose of it was when it was installed there, but it's in bad shape. And so the plan calls for that to be removed and the footer for the new garage to be made stronger and then just grade the property down so there is no, there will be landscaping there. Um, it will not be the landscaping you see now up on a raised wall. It will be a, more of a slope and there will be plantings and landscaping around there. I don't know if you can look at the rendering of what the proposed garage will look like, um, the back side of it. Um, One, right there, the one. So, so that timber wall will go and there will be landscaping along there. And as you can see, there will be more of a stone facade on part of the garage. The, the middle part of the garage there um, where it's peaked actually comes out a little bit further than the rest of the garage. The main purpose for that is they're not making our hearses any shorter. And the garage that we have, we've, we store our hearses now at, in East Rochester um, because the garage isn't long enough. So, How many um, will fit in there once it's completed? We'll have two hearses probably there um, and still have one in East Rochester. We currently have three. Um, and other cars obviously will still will be in that area as well. So, um, but there will be landscape. It's, and, and, you know, the, the main thing is we're, we're doing this to beautify the property. So um, we don't want to, if, if you know, there's some of the landscaping you'll see along the, the plan for the landscaping. Um, for instance, Robin loves those ornamental trees that are there now. Unfortunately, we've been told that we cannot move them, they will die. So they have to be taken out. I still would like to try and move them behind the building and give them a chance, but um, the other thing is where the stairs, we, we lived there. Three years ago, we renovated the apartment upstairs, so we live above the funeral home. That's why the deck is there. Um, because of removing that wall, the stairwell for our deck, which we really don't use, but it's a way of egress because we don't, we only have one stairwell in our apartment. So we needed another way of egress. Um, so that stairwell will actually come down about halfway to a, um, a landing and then turn and go down towards the front of the property um, because we can't bring it down straight the way it is currently if that wall goes away. I don't know if that answered yeah, your question. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Um, one, one other thing, so you had mentioned the office space that's you're converting the open air space to the office space. Mm -hmm. um, what's gonna go, what's, what does that involve? Is it, are you gonna you know, put windows in the openings, run duct work, do all that kind of? So there will be, there will be some, um, we've talked about two different ways of doing that and we're working with a contractor, Livingston Associates, um, they're, the, they're not sure of how it's going to be done other than it, it could be serviced
because it's not a big area. It could be serviced with our existing HVAC with new ductwork. He also said it could conceivably be serviced with a couple of like Mitsubishi headers um, that could probably do the same thing. But there will be um, a little excavation under there because we are also going to be putting a handicapped restroom in that area. So it'll be a handicapped restroom, a, an arrangement office, not a work office, but a, a, an office to meet with families and also a, a, an entranceway still. And if you'll, you'll see the, the architectural plans, it also has a small elevator because the grade is about only about three or four steps, but just enough where we need an, a lift, not an elevator, but a lift to get um, up that elevation. So that's what will be where that current little porch area is. Great, thank you, mm -hmm. that's all for now. Anybody else? Yeah. Bob? You had mentioned that the sidewalk walkway would be a covered walkway? Correct. And that's in the front of the building? Correct. Okay. Um, and it will, grade, there... it will grade up because it will be a handicapped entrance to the front of the building. So it will be a, grade, uh, a graded walkway. Okay. So that, unless I missed it, I don't see that in the elevations. That's your department. In the elevation, uh, if you look at the right it side, does it looks like it. the roof line changes a little bit. It's it, right there. That's it's so yeah. So where the front portage comes out, it's going to go from the parking lot up to the front of the building. Is a slight elevation, slight okay. ramp. Okay, I was looking at the front elevation, but I couldn't see the depth. Okay. So yes, okay. the roof the roof needs to be extended over that. <clears throat> Six foot sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the whole thing gets a shallower pitch? Yes. I, I believe that's what's going to happen. Should have invited Pat. Okay. Our should have, but I can, <laughs> open. I can see it on that side, what the you know profile looks like. So, okay. And the, the colors are so the top, the cedar are like a dark Thank you. blue gray. Well, the hardy siding can be varied. So we were talking about breaking it up a little bit like a cedar shaped look, but it's gonna be that bluish gray color that we're kind of looking at. But it will um, be an accent to the other siding. Yes, yeah. and it'll be like regular siding that just to give a little wow factor to the outside of the building. So it's not just all siding like it is now, that's all the same. Right. Yeah. We've noticed it on some other buildings here in Penfield and we really like the look of that. Kind of the color, kind of like the, the color. If you the if redo you, of the buildings down um, behind M and T. Behind M and T. Um, oh, I'm not, not sure what color it, that is. Yeah, I don't know. Are you familiar right with, at the corner of you know by? Um, if you were on four, if you're on Atlantic Avenue, the color that we like, and we even have a picture of it, is the, the, the color of the of uh, Dick Horowitz's office oh, um, nice. at the end of Panorama Trail. Um, at Atlantic Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, it's right for the fast track, yeah. It's kind of a dark gray. Yeah. 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 Okay. But we you know, we just wanted it to be more, we, we don't want to, as you probably are aware, there are, you know, some funeral homes out there that are much, I mean, Kind of Taj Mahalish. Yep. We've always been there. There you go. Yeah. It's kind of that. Yeah. Um, we're, we've always been complimented that ours is, you know, yes, it's not huge, but it's homey, and that's we don't want to lose that hominess. Um, but and just yeah, yeah, we just need to make it more comfortable for families. But yeah, there's, there's there it is very right similar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Similar type stones. You don't want yeah. it to match mm -hmm. exactly. Like yeah. yeah. Marco mm -hmm. Taylor was the yeah. lawyers. Brown coffee. Yeah, they came out real nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. As we said, could put up something the same color, but we don't want someone to drive down the road and say, oh, it's the same old thing. You know? <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other questions? I guess I have one other question that the stormwater retention, bioretention, like a rain garden type thing? Yes. 
So like and it's a marginal it's a, plants it's a, in there, and it's a, a filter system that you know the first flush of uh, rainfall that gets in the parking lot, it gets to it gets to there, yeah, filter we'll through, through a, a filter, bit. collect with the under drain, goes to the storm sewer system. Anything that if we get some huge deluge that it gets more than six inches in that ponding area right. overflows. <clears throat> when, when he said that, my wife and I were chuckling to ourselves because it was the last year or two years ago? Two years ago. Three months in a row at the top of the hill, a water main break, <coughs> and we get all the water. So we're very happy to have that retention right. area. <laughs> sure. <coughs> okay. No other questions here. Anybody in the audience like to comment on this application? Um, let me check. You can call in 340-8771 or go to penfield.org. Let me just refresh this here to see if there's any calls. I don't see any. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you for your time tonight. Thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, I guess we will call this hearing closed. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. Uh, when do we know more? So <clears throat> we'll move back into work session for a short period of time to just discuss okay. um, the two applications tonight. Great. And so um, is it is it some? And I'm just not trying to put you on the spot, but <clears throat> is this something that can be approved? Conditional to the Zoning Board of Appeals next week. I'd, I'd really like to not have it delayed another month. I mean, we have our contractors ready to go and things, so um, we, that's, know, we didn't have to come back in September. It would be helpful. That, that's what we're going to discuss. Great. All right. Thank All you right. again. You're welcome Much to appreciate it. stick around if you'd like. Oh, no. We'll, we'll wait to hear. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you again. Thanks. Uh, good to see you. Take care. Okay. Um, I'll move back to the dog hotel. Go back. Yeah, let's go uh, in order. <coughs> so what are, what are we waiting on for? Uh, we need elevations and uh, additional. We should have some plans. If you want some architecturals. Oh, yeah. Floor can... plans and elevations. Um, I'm particularly interested in seeing in the mic. Make sure you're in the mic. Particularly interested in seeing the um, wall assemblies and the STC ratings and the IIC ratings. Um, that's structure borne sound, um, and and particularly with the windows. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, if if what I'm seeing it, it appears to be. Uh, at least with the larger suites, a window in every suite. Um, so in the event that something does rile up the dogs and you've got a number of dogs and one dog barks and gets the other dogs barking for a, you know, a, a period of time and that sound is transmitting through the windows. And, and as we all know on this board, we've read these reports for years, yep. sound dissipates uh, through a distance and there's there's ambient sound in the neighborhood and there's ambient sound in the air whether there's traffic or not so we have these other mitigation factors and and uh, with all due respect to mr. Popley the people inside his building will never hear Probably um, the noise uh, generated from inside the building and it sounds like they have a good uh, uh, a good uh, fail-safe plan in place to address uh, sound uh, outside, outside. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see if, if one person has 20 dogs, responsible for 20 dogs in a thousand square foot pen, how they're going to wrestle the one dog that's making the ruckus to get that dog inside when the dogs don't have leashes. But I'm sure that they will tell us that. Um, but, I, but I think, you know, the proof is in the pudding here. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's uh, <coughs> normal and appropriate and of course seekers in play. Um, to look at uh, noise pollution and make sure that they reasonably uh, address the potential for noise pollution. Um, very interested in, in seeing uh, the field sound test that they had conducted in another facility <coughs> and, and yeah. see what that reveals. Yeah. Um, 
and then along with the, uh, the, the material samples and the architectural plans um, and uh, um, how the ZBA reacts to that application. Yeah. And so while we were sitting here, Mike did send in both the videos as well as uh, two sound studies. Okay. Um, so, so I'll make sure we get those into your materials and, and upload them to the drive. <coughs> okay. Any other comments? Before we I suggest anybody can take a look at that one, Henry, because I mean, I've been out there several times, and I always heard about you know, maybe Mike hmm. was there when they were closed or something. I don't know, but so I always could hear. I I would like to say that it might be unfair to this applicant to go out there because it sounds like these folks have found uh, ways to mitigate the noise. Um, both with the exterior panels and with how they're treating the interior. So um, I don't think it, it's unfair to, for anybody. I mean, we've done it in the past. For, yeah. So I don't think it's unfair. Yeah. I, I think it's a good idea if, if anybody can to do that, whether or not they want to you know, compare that or whatever. Maybe, you know, maybe they do have something new that's working. We don't know. We don't have any in the area that they've built. In fact, none in the state right now. No, but the, so. but the one in Henrietta, if they're not using this kind of um, a panel at the exterior um, that, and, and I'm not sure, I'd like to, I'd like to look into this, but um, I'm not sure what kind of sound absorbing properties these panels have. Um, and, and also this, this artificial turf probably has some sound absorbing properties. They might not no. have any of that in that Henrietta facility is all I'm saying it. We might be comparing it. I don't know. It I didn't, you know, go up and look at it yeah, as I yeah. drive by because, uh, you know, Sure. And I think it's a, it's a good, the only thing we have to compare, actually, at this point. Yeah. I mean, you know, Local. so, and I'm not sure about that, but I, you know, the sound goes up, you know, so, I mean, maybe, well, they, sound, maybe they get the same fence. Sound goes in all directions. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's just a suggestion. Okay. You don't have to do it. We never have to. That you pick me up. We'll go out for a <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> yep. across, right. across the road from that site, there is, maybe it's just a dog daycare, but they have an outside fenced in area, and that location backs up to Resident. a residential yeah, area. Coventry. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. It looks like it's a pretty small scale operation because it's in a, what was a private home. Um, and I don't know if, you know, there's any sounds you know it's kind of hard to compare but there's a my point is there's a similar operation maybe across the street right next to a residential good point okay so so, so maybe while we're while you're drafting this um maybe you ask the applicant to include some background information relative to the facility where they had the field uh, uh, sound tests conducted so that we can kind of compare that the size of that facility and it, its proximity to you know other noise generation as compared to this one at least have some context right okay we we'll <coughs> certainly do that and I'm, I'll take a look at the studies too and just to see if they include any information in that that may be helpful as well okay um, with that, somebody want to move to table? I'll move to table. You have a yeah. second? I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Let's start preparing a draft okay. uh, resolution so that if everything's in order, we can take care of this next month. Okay, I can take a look at doing that. And, it, and if, I mean, I, I'm actually going out of town on the 14th, but assuming I have this material sufficiently in advance, I'll review it and, and give AJ my notes before I go. Okay. Okay. Great. Application number two. All right. Application number two, 1704 Penfield Road. We do have a uh, landscape plan for that. Yes. Can we bring that up? Yeah. It, I'm sure shows the wall because the plans here show that wall staying. 
Uh, the, I don't believe the wall shows <coughs> the clinches. Show. Even the elevation, I think, looked like it had the, the wall. Elevation. The elevation <coughs> showed that it seemed to keep the wall. Right I there. believe in initial conversations with them, a lot of that was contingent on getting a grading release from the neighbor, which they provided, uh, because they would not be able to smooth out the slope without encroaching on the neighbor's property. And they do have that. Yes, they did. Um, they did provide uh, uh, Hurlbutt Properties, uh, the owner of the nursing home next door, uh, provided that. Okay. As this was one that um, we do have a draft started, right? Uh, I haven't. I haven't started it yet. Um, <clears throat> I can start that one as well. Is there? Are there any deal breakers that um, anything out of the ordinary that uh, would prevent us from giving a conditional approval? I don't remember anything in the PRC memo that would be a deal breaker, but anything probably could just be handled, you know, uh, pre mylar so. Yeah, most of our comments are relatively minor. It was providing minor engineering details on the stormwater treatment facility and signature lines, and very basic stuff. Maybe conditioned upon zoning board approval. Right. Yeah, we can condition on zoning board approval. Any reason why we shouldn't do that? Anybody? No. The only thing that I that I would question is we would typically ask for floor plans, and, and we would typically uh, want to see samples. Um, we don't have either of those at, at this time. Um, I'm I'm very much in favor of the project. I I know this facility quite well. I I knew the original owners. Um, I think what they're doing is, is terrific, and uh, um, but th those are two criteria that we would typically, you know, use. Uh, for so if we that. potentially condition, put those in as conditions uh, for um, I guess additional board approval. I mean, I guess you could do it in a, a couple of ways. Again, I, I won't be here um, right. in September. I, you know, I guess you, you know, you could ask a plan to look at it. Um, that would be one way, and then you know, all you'd have to do is accept their comments and run. Any comments? So you're thinking maybe, so what would you want to, well, I'm just thinking it's like a fairly, approval of materials? Uh, it's primarily a facade change. Yeah. The garage would be replaced with a building. Um, their footprint is largely the same with the garage. There's just the extension. They, um, the stormwater retention facility seems to be it, like an improvement and you know, Jim's definitely correct in that we normally will see at least a colored rendering or actual materials. Um, I, I'm just not, I don't know why we'd necessarily hold it up for, if we can condition those things and, and staff is comfortable and the rest of the board's comfortable with those being conditioned in. If, I mean, yeah, I can I, I can draft something up for a resolution um, and see what kind of conditions you guys throw out some conditions, see if there's, um, they all match sort of the comments that we're going to have. We had on the plans, um, you know, for approval, I mean, typically even a conditional resolution would you want to take a vote on it in September anyways, or would you just want it to essentially approve it now conditioned on the zoning board and getting all the other materials that we want? What I was thinking was we'd approve a condition on the zoning board approval okay. and approval of the um, architecturals and the uh, drainage 
plan, but that's typically a staff. I mean, you normally have a lot of conditions anyways. I mean, all your approvals are conditional approvals. Right. But these are just kind of two additional approvals that you don't normally, you know, uh, condition. Yeah. So you... That's you because we have that material ahead of time. Right. Ahead of time. Yeah. But you can add those as, as additional conditions so that you can move forward. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't foresee an issue with the zoning board. I mean, the only reason this really isn't a pre-existing non-conforming is because they're taking the garage down and constructing a new garage. So any pre-existing non-conforming goes away with the destruction of the structure. Um, so, I mean, they're not asking, I don't believe they're asking for any variance greater than what they already have on the existing structure. Um, so I don't foresee that being a big holdup with the zoning board. Um, so if everybody's more wanna, comfortable, uh, just waiting. I'm okay with that. I just uh, throwing it out there. Oh, I, I, I think you're. I think what you're doing is is appropriate. Just you know, I always I always think about other applicants that come before us and say, well, well, you, you didn't give us any floor plans and you didn't show us any, right. you know, interior changes and we don't know really what the materials are going to look like other than some testimony and. But you let somebody else do it, so you know I think it's appropriate to have some kind of a litmus test in here, <clears throat> whatever, whatever Peter thinks works. Um, you know, I mean, I, I always want to ask the question: if if we're generally okay with the direction that you want to go, mm -hmm. can't we just say that um, you know final approval by the uh, planning board chairman shall satisfy this condition? I mean, we, we've said that before about, you yeah. know, approval uh, by the engineer will be... Landscape plan. Yeah, we, we, could, we could do that as plan. a condition that signet, that the planning board, um, that all conditions have been met and the planning board chairman signature, um, you know, certifies that all board conditions have been met or something I mean, like that. We're going to be, we're going to be in town hall next week meeting with you. If they can get those materials here and we can spend an extra... 15 minutes looking those over and the other board members are okay with that we could satisfy that then it's going to take you a week to get the letter anyhow right yeah and that would still be before the zoning board so we'd, we'd still have additional yeah. time if you yeah. really wanted but they're to. meeting the 17th and we're meeting on the 16th so any comments from i have no problem with that yeah Gary? Kelly? Mm -mm. Somebody want to? So the only thing we haven't finished, I don't have a finalized part two, part yeah. three, yeah. Yes, we do. We do? Yeah. I finished that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, so the first thing would be the <laughs> EAF. Yeah. I, had, I had one more question. Sure. I think he mentioned the stairwell, stairway coming off the deck. Mm -hmm because of the change is going to make a 90? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see that in the elevation. So just a note yeah, to it's in, It's in plane. You don't see it because it's in plane. Well, and also it's showing the retaining wall. So this was based on I don't think this one retaining, the keeping the retaining wall. Yeah. So just, if, if he got updates. the grading release from the neighbor, then that retaining wall, it sounds like, is going to go away. So then in order for him to finish There'd the stairs, the he's got to, he's got to turn it towards Penfield Road. Yeah, because that's looking at it. Right. I don't see a 90 on that. Well, you're not going to because yeah. it's landing well, on the existing anyone, retaining so, wall. You know, maybe yeah, we can, so just we can get Pat the elevation. to mm -hmm. He's probably already made those changes, right? Uh, I'm not. I'm not aware. How, how long have you had these? Uh, these were the ones they submitted for the application back in the end of June. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Pat's yeah. probably already made these changes, and. Uh, well, but so if he didn't get the grading release until Monday, yeah, then we just got the grading release. Probably he didn't. Well, get a hold of them. See if they can. <coughs> see if they can get a set so of stamped Does that, does that change? <coughs> no, just make it a, a condition of approval. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, let's do the EAF. Move to uh, authorize me to sign the EAF. Move to authorize AJ to sign the EAF. <laughs> do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. 
Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Uh, do we want to conditionally approve the conditionally application approve the application based on them submitting the additional information and a positive outcome of the zoning board yes you have to say all that you can just say approve. move to conditionally, conditionally approve yeah. <laughs> based on everything that Doug based on everything just want to make sure it's all on the record <laughs> and, and and the discussion <coughs> that we had this evening yes and the discussion we've had this evening we have a second yeah an hour second hatsky that's key, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. Any other business? Well, do you That's have to awesome. do something on the conditional use? Hmm? Do we have to do something for the conditional use? Uh, no, I think that's covered within the, the approval resolution. Okay. Is Just want to make sure. The conditional use permit. Yes. Okay. Is that it? Anything else? All right. Have fun. We will adjourn. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And have a great rest of your summer, and we'll see you almost in the fall. Thank you still for the summer.